While I paint, a lot of thoughts go through my mind, and it occurred to me that since I am scarred by illusion, my paintings should probably be referred to as illusions. So, this illusion is called Mercury's Changeling. I was intimidated by this sketch, so initially, I wasn't ever going to paint it. It's dynamic, different, and unlike anything I've done before. So, that's what made me paint it anyway. I honestly don't know where all these ideas have been coming from, or how I've been able to do them so well, because in the end, this turned out really lovely, and it only took me like 90 minutes to do, which it doesn't seem like a long time, but it kind of does. But it, it's just, I don't know, it's like, I don't know what's come over me. And it's so small. This is 9 by 12 canvas paper. I almost lost the face, but it came through by working slowly and very carefully. With little paint, because that's an issue I make in a different painting that you'll see. I use too much paint, and then it gets muddy, and then I'm just putting wet on wet, which, when you're working small, is not what you want. Anyway, if you watched one or to maybe three of my earlier videos, I talked about my affinity to Mercury, as it correlates to vampires, traversing worlds, and straddling boundaries, how a person is a bridge, you know, <laughs> sort of a conduit between a bunch of different things, and at least if I haven't said that before, I'm saying it now. Additionally, Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosity episode that is an adaption from the H.P. Lovecraft story, The Pigman's Model. Well, <laughs> I conceptualized this before I saw that episode. And after, I rambled about the allure of cursed art in another video. Sorry if none of this makes sense, but that's the most context I can provide to make this make sense for you. You know, to like grasp this painting's depth and the personal connection it has to me. There's also the Florence and the Machine lyric that comes to mind. A woman is a changeling, always shifting shape. That's from uh, The King, that's the song, from the album Dance Fever, I believe. Florence reminds me a lot, for some reason, of a friend I had. She was a Virgo, and she was also a redhead. Although, if you ask her, she was a strawberry blonde. Anyway, I forgot to mention... Since I'm on the topic of changelings, demons, you know, sort of in there too, cursed art as well. Some people say that fairies and demons are actually the same thing, which I could see. The world before the prevalence of, like, Christianity wasn't as black and white. It was, you know, very polytheistic, pagan, even, yeah. That reminds me of the only Meghan Markle podcast episode I listened to where it was her and Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey was the reason I clicked. If you, if, if, I, I'm not a lamb, a lamb, you know, because that's what she calls her following, but I think I'm, you know what, I might actually be. I'm not a stan, I'm a lamb. <laughs> Some people say the fairies are actually demons. So, uh, in the in that podcast, they talked about the word diva originally meaning goddess in Italian and how it became only in modern times to have a negative connotation to like a dramatic, demanding woman. It makes sense because most words with the suffix div correlate to divine or like some level of divinity, at least I think in most languages. Like the Indian name Divya comes to mind. A lot of words are like that. I know the word demon in Greek had several different spellings, but it wasn't innately considered dark or bad. Unclean, if you're dramatic. It was just a spirit, although upon further interaction with the spirit, you could probably distinguish, like, its, its aura, its intent, its vibe. I own the book, The Dictionary of Demons. It is a very interesting read, but it's like, because it's a dictionary, it's like, ugh, reading a dictionary. <laughs> They're actually quite varied. In personality, based on the descriptions, it seems how you approach them really matters the most. And it makes sense that, you know, they'd be varied because people are. That's why when I watch Ghost Adventures or even like Ghost Files, really any ghost hunting show, I'm always confused that they don't ever consider that a dead human spirit could have an attitude, be a trickster toying with somebody. 
I mean, people do that. Look at Beetlejuice. <laughs> I really admire other languages like Greek and Italian because they have they have a lot of intrans untranslatable words that I think are really indicative of like the cultural vibes. You know, like the what the what the country was like kind of founded on, steeped in, if you will. Greece really seem to love love because they have all those like names for it and they like they've really analyzed it i am like oh as a venus and virgo i love that i really do i'm like oh yeah france has that thing with death you know um i have it tattooed on my leg one of the intranslatable words um la appel divide which is call of the void you can look it up it's a bit dark but i really get that and they also have a lot of other, like, things correlated with death, the mort, living dead girl type stuff like that. There's also probably some words in Italian, but I can't think of any. Anyway, illusions. I, going forward, an illusionist in my own way. That's my new thing. In the past, I had still chaos to summarize my art. The feeling, uh, that, that's how I, how I could articulate the feeling of it. Which is a hard thing to do, but it, that's the only way I can because there are so many things within my art to me at once. They occur, like, all at once. In a way, still chaos is still very much a thing, but I used to use it as a hashtag when I had an Instagram. I hate Instagram, and I don't really like that era of my art. And I, it's still with me, it's just like an unspoken thing. So if you take anything away from this, it is art, truly art, art goes on, so I will in my next video.